Hey everybody. As you know, I'm presently running Gecko Linux as my daily driver, and it is a derivative of OpenSUSE. What we're looking at today is Regatta OS 22 Discovery, which is also a derivative of OpenSUSE, but it has a little bit more under the hood than what Gecko does. Regatta OS is aimed more towards creators, more everyday use, and more gaming use. Now, Regatta OS allows you to more easily get what really matters, offering everything you need to enjoy better performance with your PC and doing simple everyday tasks a lot easier. Now, if you come to their site, which is regattaos.com, I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. You've got home, features, game access. I want to show you they got a couple awesome applications that come with this operating system for gamers, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy that. And then when you come down here, when it's simple to get new apps, you can do anything. Getting new apps on Regatta is simple as doing it on your Android or iOS device. They have their own app store, which is really awesome. We'll go over it here in a second. And then you've got Regatta OS Game Access. This is really awesome. This is a place to pretty much have all your games and launchers in one area, so that way you don't have to have three or four different things on your system that you have to open to get to your games. You can pretty much do it from this one hub, and it's really awesome the way they put it all together. And also, a lot of the times when you run gaming or you do gaming on a laptop, you've got two different graphics cards. Like I have an Asus ZenBook, and it has a AMD Radeon onboard graphics card, and then it has an NVIDIA on top of that. And sometimes when you do creating or you do gaming, those two kind of fight each other or one won't let the other one in. You don't have that problem anymore. You've got an application on there that makes your life a lot easier. And we'll look at that here shortly. And then, of course, you're going to have the same incredible experience with cross-platform software that you do on any other Linux distribution. It does rely on the latest Linux platforms and technologies to put this operating system together. And then we scroll down a little bit more. You've got support contact about. And then, of course, you could download right here. But I'm going to go back up top. You've got features right here. Meet Regatta. You can go check that out. Game access. We kind of touched on that a little bit. We'll look at it when we go over into the operating system. And then download news and support. And to download it, you just click on download. You come over here and it says Regatta OS 22 Discovery. And then it gives you your minimum system requirements. 2 gigahertz dual core processor or better. 4 gigabytes of system memory, 25 gigs of free hard space, and a USB port for the install media. And then you just come over here and download Regatta OS. So what we're going to do right now without any further to do is go over to the Regatta OS desktop. If you download Regatta OS, throw it on a USB or open it in a virtual machine, this is the desktop you'll be looking at. It's kind of a customized version of the KDE desktop. And I do believe it is the 5.25. We will check that here in a second. As a matter of fact, let's check it right now. Let's go look at settings, system settings. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we will scroll down. And you do have the YAS control center here. We'll look at that here in just a second. About this system, it is KDE Plasma version 5.25.4. KDE Frameworks 5.97.0. Kernel version 5.19.3 dash LP 154.5 default. So like I said, it is based on the OpenSUSE operating system. Graphics platform, it is running X11 and it is not running Wayland. So a lot of people will probably be happy to hear that. Some won't. Now you got Yast, let's go ahead. And we've opened up Yast. And just to let you know, if you do download this and try it, the password is Regatta. So you open up Yast. Let's make that full screen so everybody can see it. You've got hardware right here. You can do everything from view your hardware information, software repositories. You can see what repositories you have set up. Let's go ahead and open that and I'll show it to you. And it's going to have to refresh them before we can open them up and take a look at them. And once they're refreshed, there is your software repositories that you have out of the box. Now that is a few more than I have in Gecko, and I'm pretty sure you noticed that. But it's got a lot of things that add emulators and games and graphics, hardware, and then uh, Plasma Regatta OS. So it's got a lot of things in there for gaming. As you can see right there, that's where you're going to be getting a lot of your main system software from. So let's go ahead and click OK on that. And then you've got software management over here. You're going to have more than one way to install software on this operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and open up software management. 
So you can see it. It should refresh, and it's going to take just a second to do that because it's got to update all the repositories. And that was a pretty long list we just looked at a while ago. So we'll let it do that, and when it's done, we will continue with the video. Okay, that took about a minute and a half, so that wasn't too bad. And what you're going to find out here is with this, it's more of a type search install type situation here. So what you would want to do is go up here. If you wanted to click search, you just come over here and type in something like OBS Studio, and it will search it out. You can click it right there, and then you would come down here and click accept, and it would install it for you. Now, if that's the way you prefer to install software, you can. They do have their own Regatta OS Software Center, which we will look at here in a second. But I like showing everybody YAST because it's a really powerful tool. And if you're using an OpenSUSE-based operating system, it's definitely something you want to learn how to use. And like I said, it's just going to make things for you a lot easier in some situations. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And then you can come down here. You've got system. You've got bootloader, date, time, partitioner, kernel settings, service manager, host names, security, You've got app armor. You can set up your firewall, configure sudo. Like I said, security center, user group, and management. But this is a good place to come to take care of a lot of your in-depth things that you're going to need to do on your operating system. So if you do download this and give it a shot, and heck, if you just download OpenSUSE or Gecko or any OpenSUSE-based operating system, please go check out Yast. It's a powerful tool, and it's easy to learn how to use. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And this is KDE settings. You guys have seen me go over these a lot of times, so I'm not going to get too in-depth in that. So let's close out of that. And then you've got install Regatta OS up here. It's the Calamares installer. So it is definitely something that you're used to seeing, especially if you've watched any of my videos. Right here, it's not going to let me do much because I am in a virtual machine, but it's just a welcome screen, your partitions, you can set it up to auto partition or set partitions up yourself, summary, install, and then finish. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. What we're going to do right now is we're going to come down to the bottom. Like I said, it's KDE. We're not going to go over this and beat it with a, a stick because you guys know you've got date and time. Hidden apps are right here. Internet, USB, Bluetooth, battery, and volume. And then you come over here, and right here, you've got the Regatta OS store. We're going to go ahead and open that up now. And once the store opens, this is what you'll be looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and maximize it so you all can see it. And quite honestly, it's one of the better looking stores out there. I think it, the layout is really nice, and it seems to be a little bit more polished. Maybe I'm wrong. If you disagree, let me know in the comments below. But you've got some suggested right here. You've got Steam and Bottles, Discord, Google Chrome, WPS Office, Let's go ahead and come down here a little bit more. And it lets you know right here you've got free applications. Of course, everything on Linux is free. And then you've got the most popular free games. It has a line for those right here as well. Photography apps. It breaks those down right there. Communication apps. And then you can come over here to create. And it'll bring up your creators apps, your OBS Studios, your DaVinci Resolves, and things like that. Krita, Penta, Lightworks. Then you've got Work, Microsoft Teams, WPS Office, Only Office, Slack, and then Play. And this is one of the things I like right here is it lays out free games on Steam that you can play. And then if you come down here, it says Best Paid Games on Steam. Not free. It lets you know those aren't free. But if you've got a Steam account and you decide to run Steam on Regatta OS, you can access things right here. And then, of course, your classic emulators down here, SNES 9X. PCSX2, Dolphin, uh, that's for PlayStation 2, that's your Wii and GameCube emulator, Super Nintendo over here, of course, and then, of course, Steam, Heroic, Lutris, Mini Galaxy, then SC Controller, which makes it easy to set up your controller, but that's already installed in this operating system. I'll show you that here in a second. Then you've got Development, which is your Visual Studio Code, Android Studio, Utilities, VirtualBox, HP, LIP for your printers, NVIDIA drivers, it just makes things really easy and upfront for you. And then, of course, it'll show you everything that is installed. Firefox, Kate, Ocular, SC controllers right there. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the store, let's go ahead and close out of that. And then right here is your Regatta OS Game Access. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And when it opens up, it opens up full screen. And if you look over to the left, you can set up all your launchers over here. Battle.net, GOG Galaxy, Origin. Epic Games, Rockstar Launcher, and then Ubisoft Connect. 
And then you can go over here, and once you have all of those in here, you can go over to All Games, and all the games you have in all of these will be shown over here. So you won't have to go to Battle.net to play Battle.net games, and you won't have to go to Epic to play Epic games. All of your games will be listed in here. And right here it says List with some of the games that you can run with Brigada OS Game Access. You've got Anthem, which is Origin, and then Ubisoft Connect, Rockstar Launcher, Far Cry 3 on Ubisoft. So you can have pretty much every single thing in every single game that you play all in this one area. I really like it. I think it makes things a little bit easier. Of course, you're going to have your separate launchers, obviously, but you don't have to open that specific launcher to open a game. Maybe you just want to come over and find a game you're not sure what you want to play. You're like, okay, I want to play Far Cry. You can click it to play it, and it'll automatically open up Ubisoft Connect and get you into your game. So it's just a little something I think is pretty neat, and I want to have a chance to kind of play around with it a little bit. I'm actually in the talks right now with a Linux-centric computer company, and I'm hoping that they uh, sponsor a couple videos about gaming on Linux, because that way they could actually loan me some hardware, let me actually do a review on the hardware, and then actually do some reviews on gaming on Linux. So that's something I'm trying to work on right now. Hopefully that'll come to fruition. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then we come back down here. We've got Dolphin File Manager. I'm not going to go too in-depth about this. It's a nice file manager. It's got quite a few different things that you can do in it. you got your usual suspects over here, and of course you've got your home folders right here and then Firefox web browser. And then we'll go ahead and go to the app menu. And I want to go to all applications. You've got advanced network configuration. You've got browse your C drive because you do have wine on this system. And then you've got dolphin emoji selector, file manager, super user mode, firewall, hardware information, info center, Kate, KCalc, KDE Connect, KRDC, KSysGuard. That's something I want to look at. Let's see what kind of resources we're using here. Let's see if they have HTOP. And they don't. Let's see what TOP says we're using. And let's go ahead and maximize that. So in a KDE environment, we are presently using, let me go ahead and make that a little bigger for y'all. We are using 728 megs of the three gigs I have issued to it. That's not too bad at all. Actually, 748.7 that's really good. That's lightweight for a KDE desktop. We're going to be pretty lightweight there. Makes things easy on you. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then let's come back over here. And I want to take a look at two things. There's your SC controller. This is where you come to basically set up your controller options here, okay? Plus, you can also set it up to be run on a keyboard. Now, if you want an Xbox controller, you can change that. It changes things up. You've got your right stick, left stick. And remember, if you do have a regular, what you're seeing right here is the, the fancy Xbox controller. This is kind of your right stick over here now, and then your buttons are down here. But if you have a regular Xbox controller, when you get over here and you start programming all this, just make sure when you get to right here, you actually use the right stick, and then you can program your buttons, and you'll be good to go. Makes things real easy for you. So let's go ahead and close out of that, and then come back over here, and then you've got Max Q. This is a very powerful tool as well. Let me open that up. And with this tool right here, you've got your settings. You've got, let me go ahead and make this full screen. You've got screen settings, test dedicated GPU. If you've got NVIDIA, AMD, whatever you need to do, you can test it right here. You can turn desktop effects on or off. You can lock widgets. You can block them for better gaming performance. You can prevent screen tearing right here. And then, of course, you can adjust your CPU power from performance to balanced, depending on how you want to set up everything for when you're gaming. And then performance over here will give you GPU usage, VRAM usage, CPU usage, and RAM usage. So this is when you got it on bare metal with a dedicated GPU. This is going to help you out a lot here. You'll be able to see what your GPU is actually using, what kind of VRAM is being used. So it's a nice tool to be able to track all of that. And then, of course, your system. You can set everything here, your graphic chipset, video memory size, operational system, system memory, Vulkan API, OpenGL API version, Mesa driver version, CPU model, Linux kernel version, and then more details about your system. So if you do download this and you are a gamer and you use it in a USB live environment, please check these tools out. It'll make it worth your while, I promise. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And that is pretty much, if we go down through here, 
I think that's the tools I wanted to make sure I pointed out. And there's some basic wine setups here, Wacom Tablet Finder, Yast we just looked at, and I showed you the Yast Software Manager. That was a quick look at Regatta OS 22. I'm telling you, if you're somebody that games or you're somebody that likes retro gaming, this is definitely one to download and give a shot to. It's OpenSUSE based, so it's going to be strong, it's going to be stable, and it's going to be very easy for you to get up and running. So I suggest if you haven't taken a look at it, zip on over to their website, download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, and take it for a test drive. If you're somebody that's already using Regatta OS 22, or you're somebody that's going to give it a test drive, please let me know in the comments below. Do me a big favor before you leave today, please like, subscribe, or follow my channel doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, throwing us a donation on PayPal, or zipping on over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.